Hello and welcome to On Track GP. We've got a lot to get through and catch up on from a busy Monaco weekend, but we do head into the Spanish Grand Prix. It is the Circuit de Barcelona, <laughs> Catalonia. Um, give you some stats about it before we get started. I'm very intrigued because I like Barcelona, so I want to know. Well, I don't know. Matisse is here, planned. by the way. <laughs> what they got planned for us. Uh, it is 2.894 miles in length. It's got 14 turns. Uh, it's known for the long, fast bend at turn three, and it's 1.047 metres long mm. uh, pit straight. Uh, the first Grand Prix here was held in 1991. It's mm. been on the calendar ever since. Yeah. It's also the scene of Max Verstappen's first F1 win in his race. <laughs> <laughs> in his racing career with Red Bull in 2016. Uh, what happened there was that the two Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg collided on the opening lap and uh, that was, you know, we never looked back, eh? Yeah, we never looked yeah. back. Um, also the scene of Pastor Maldonado's epic win in 2012. Most recent win for Williams and Fernando Alonso, uh, his last F1 win to date in 2013. Um, this year we'll see the removal of the chicane at the final corner, uh, marking the first time since 2006 that F1 has raced at the circuit without the chicane. Damn. So some, there's all the stats out the way. Some, some fun <laughs> memories there. That that Mercedes crash definitely stands out massively. Um, good good will to will racing from those two. Didn't really like each other. Lots of cap throwing. Iconic. In, in behind the scenes as well when when races were over. Yeah. So we need more of that this season from Checo. I need to see some elbows out. Well, speaking of Checo, uh, let's have a little recap, shall we, of what happened uh, in Monaco. It was another win for Max Verstappen. Uh, it sees him move 39 points clear at the top of the championship. It was a terrible weekend for his teammate Sergio Perez. Uh, everything went wrong. I mean, he crashed out in Q1 of qualifying. Numerous incidents throughout the race. He finished in 16th. Um, I, there was a lot of pitting going on. I think he ended up pitting three or four times. Mm. Um, it was just a really poor race. And I think that, you know, when you look back at... Maybe the few weeks prior, we were saying that there could be something here in terms of a battle between the two Red Bulls. It hasn't really panned out that way. And on a street circuit in Monaco, you would just think that, that Checo would do better, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I think Checo's in some serious trouble now. In terms of this championship, I've, I've not lost all hope, but I am getting to the point where I'm like, yeah, Max is probably going to clean up in the European part of the, 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 the kind of calendar now because we all knew that Checo needed to kind of dominate the early stages. And he was leading, he was pole and he still let, you know, previously he was pole and he still let Max catch up and overtake him in Miami, I think it was. Mm. So from the moment that happened, I was like, yeah, Max is going to clean up here. And we know that Monaco is just ridiculous. You can't overtake. There's no space. And, and, and Max is never going to throw it away, even with the conditions changing and people being on wrong tyre compounds and, and a little bit of drama maybe. But listen, for Max, there is no drama. He's experienced. He's won there before. He was always going to win that race. Mm. As soon as I saw qualify and I saw Max was pole, I said, race is done. We, yeah. know, we know who's going to win. It's very rare that you go to Monaco and on that street circuit that someone doesn't finish unless first. Unless you're Leclerc. If, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, unless you're Leclerc. <laughs> unless you completely bin it in the wall. Like, if you start on pole, you're most yeah. likely going to finish yeah. that race on pole. Yeah. Um, and I would say, just on Max, I know we give him a lot of... I give him a lot of credit, and obviously there is some criticism <laughs> that comes from the other side of the couch. Um, but overall, I mean, you have to just commend him. Like, you look at yeah. him in qualifying, you know, that's, that final sector was just unbelievable. It just mm. shows you what an incredibly skilled driver yeah. he is, if you didn't already know. Yeah. And there were times on this, you know, throughout this weekend where he clipped the wall, you know, it, the rain came, but he was just so confident. He's so in control of that car. Yeah. And I think that just shows the difference in terms of the driving between himself and Checo. The, the levels between maybe having complete control of the car and being yeah. at one with the car yep. uh, and i just think max is just such a brilliant example of that he he, he could be up there with one of the greatest of all time the, the, the gap between <clears throat> verstappen and checo in terms of quality reminds me of the gap between hamilton and rosberg mm. like rosberg had to sacrifice his entire life put it all on hold he spoke about it kind of after you know it was all said and done and he got that title and that is what Checo would almost have to do to stand a chance that's just to stand a chance mm. and maybe things would have to go your way a little bit as well maybe Verstappen would have to be having a couple of off days like that's what it takes to beat Verstappen because he is a generational driver and even with the other young drivers you know coming through we see Lando Norris hopefully one day will be competing George Russell they're still gonna find it very difficult to compete with Verstappen unless Verstappen weakens his car like mm. 
it's going to take something like Verstappen maybe getting bored or, or Red Bull messing up one year. Strategically, of, yeah. Yeah, and, and then maybe maybe then other people stand a chance because right now he's too dominant and that car is too easy. Yeah, he is. Uh, Helmut Marco said after that race in Monaco that Perez's mistakes were enough for the rest of the season. So that's quite a, yeah. a firm hand that they're taking with it. Mm. Uh, he also suggested that they're going to try something new in Spain. They are one of the few teams that are rumoured to be bringing in upgrades to the new RB19. Uh, he wouldn't give any specifics as to what they are but I mean, how can you upgrade a car that is already perfect? Oh, this should be allowed. This shouldn't even be allowed. What? Like, seriously, like, what more can you do to what, this car? But also, why would you? Why would you upgrade something that doesn't need upgrading? Because, this could because they are greedy as hell. <laughs> what? This could backfire. This could. Why, why change something that's not broken? I, 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 I personally don't understand why they need to upgrade. Like, at least. I, listen, it's Red Bull. They're, they're competing against themselves at this point. They probably take great joy in, in seeing how clear they are and how far down the road they are in com in compared to their competitors. They but just want to tinker now. They, they, yeah, I mean, listen, if everybody else is bringing up upgrades, you know, in terms of the, you know, Ferrari, the Mercedes, Aston Martin, if everyone's bringing upgrades, I guess Red Bull are just covering themselves. They're doing what, what they should do, which is they keep striving to be better. You compete against yourself in this sport sometimes, even as a driver as well. If you're clear down the road, you do start getting into that mentality of setting best times and trying to just keep keep pace with what you've done previously and you're going up against yourself. That's the mentality. That's how you remain at the top. So what Red Bull are doing is just, they're just being very, very professional about this. And uh, it's a shame. <laughs> it's a massive shame. It's a shame for you. It's yeah. not so much a shame Because I'd love you. it if they just kind of just, you know, put the handbrake on and just made this a little bit more competitive and put the field together a mm. little bit, but no. Okay, well, let's look at Aston Martin because they are also rumoured to be bringing in some upgrades this weekend. Mm. Uh, it's projected to bring an advantage of two tenths of a second per lap. Mm. They had another strong weekend, especially Alonso did yep. in, in general. Yep. Um, however, they did have a big blunder. Um, their team's weather radar system in Monaco uh, clearly wasn't working as accurately as the others because it mm. saw them put the medium tyres on uh, Alonso's car in the wet and then they had to pit again yeah. the next lap. And I was saying to you before we started, and anyone who watched that race knew, I mean, he was about, I think it was about seven, eight seconds or nine seconds behind uh, Max at that point prior to the, prior to the pit stop. Mm. Um, and I just think that had they not have done what they did and if they'd just gone on the, in, on the inter straight the away, yeah. then it could have just been so much better. They could have made up time and it could have been a bit of a grandstand finish because he, he had the ability to get there and be close within Max had mm. they not have messed up on the strategy. Yeah. So if I was Alonso, of course you're happy with being P2. I think that's his first P2 since 2014. Mm. But you're thinking, well, you know, that's a, that's a big that's a big issue, yeah. a big issue for us. No, 100. percent And and Alonso's at that point now where I'm looking at the standings, and he could compete with Perez. He's, for, I for think second. he's 12 points behind. He's not behind, far. Yeah. Behind Perez. He's, he's, yeah, he's he's only 12 points behind. He could compete for second in the in the drivers, drivers championship. So it's 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 one of those things where if he's going to do that, strategy is going to have to be absolutely on point because that Red Bull is still the strongest car and clearly is the strongest car on grid. So you'd expect Perez to get it, you know, get it to the end. But I think with Alonso, he's just such a quality driver. And there was a bit of a risk taken there because of course, I think some of the track was wet and some of it was dry. So that, that kind of made that more interesting in terms of what tire compound to go with. Do you take the risk and just go through the wet patch with with the mediums or do you want to go to intermediates? I think they were trying to basically outsmart the Red Bulls. Mm. And I don't think that, that they, thought that the Red Bulls would be on the mediums mm. for as long as they were. Yeah. And right. I think that's the thing. I think you just have to focus on your own strategy sometimes rather yeah. than worrying about what other teams are doing. Mm. And then I think that, you know, whatever pans out, pans out. But I mm. think keeping an eye on the Red Bulls, whether or not they thought they could win that race or not, is a different thing. Yeah. But I just think if you focus on your own strategy and do what's best for you, yeah. then you won't be in the situation where you then have to rectify the <laughs> issue and the problem that you make. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Just my thoughts on it. <laughs> uh, Lance Stroll, he had a weekend to forget though. Uh, Numerous incidents throughout the race, uh, he eventually crashed out and he retired. Um, mm. <laughs> called in by the FIA during qualifying, uh, it was noted by the stewards for failing to be weighed when asked to be weighed. He also hit one of the Haas cars in the final corner of the race. It was just a poor weekend. Yeah, just poor a, weekend a, overall. A weekend to forget for him, I think. Just quickly move on to Barcelona. He's going to want to. He's going to want to rectify that in Barcelona because. As much as we know the dynamic between him and Alonso is basically father and son, and obviously he has his father own the whole team, so he's not really under maybe Father, immense... son and uncle. Yeah, <laughs> he's not <laughs> under immense pressure. It's a brilliant family at Aston Martin. He's not under immense pressure. I think from a competitive side, 
as much as the dynamic is clear between him and Alonso, who calls the shots in terms of who's the better driver and almost kind of putting that arm around him and saying, listen, this is how you do this and kind of improving him. There is that kind of relationship from a competitive standpoint to be that far off Alonso constantly. Is, is I think we have given him praise though. I mean, yeah, obviously, have, anyone yeah. can have a bad week, a dodgy, mm. a dodgy race. But I think that he has definitely improved this season mm. under the guidance of Alonso. He's not a liability in that team. No, he's not. He's a, not. A he's not a Latifi. No, no. As much as you love Latifi. <laughs> no, he's not, not a Latifi. Latifi. However, not Latifi. I, I do think, and I've said it before, I think long-term Aston Martin, if they're to be at the top, he has to get into those podium positions and he has to get closer to Alonso. It, right now he's doing a good job, but that's not going to be good enough if you're going up against Red Bull long term, if you're going up against Ferrari and Mercedes long term. So he has to start getting in those fights a lot more often with the Ferraris and with the Mercedes and, and getting in there and, and kind of elbows out and, and splitting points because sixth, seventh is not really Aston Martin. That's not what they're trying to go for. They were demanding They were demanding when the win's coming from not so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, it is Alonso's home race in Barcelona. Uh, it's the scene of his last F1 win, as we mentioned earlier. That's 10 years ago. He's looking for win number 33, and he's mm. conveniently going to be in garage number 33 mm. on the Spanish circuit. So who knows? He got fourth in Baku, third in Miami, second in Monaco. Mm. Could it be this weekend that he takes Pole. No. Okay. Okay. Just thought we'd put the question out there. Nah, nah. It's a no. It's a, it's a no. But hey ho, you know, anything you'll be happy with I would, I would I would love to be able to tell you that that Max isn't probably gonna wrap this one, but hey. Who knows? Mm. Uh, right, moving on to Mercedes. They did look to be on the up with their new upgrades in Monaco. Mm. Uh, they couldn't really get a proper clear picture of it, though, on, yeah. on a track like that. Yeah. Um, I think this is gonna be the real test to see how those upgrades worked. Yeah. Yeah, I need upgrades badly from Mercedes because for me, when I'm looking at Mercedes at the moment, it's kind of just, it's a shadow of their former self. Like, it's, it's the, the, the finishes were nice in Monaco. It wasn't a disgrace, but it's not, it's not what we, what we expect, especially with Lewis Hamilton's kind of time running down on the clock. He needs to be, I need to see upgrades and I need to see them back looking like they can challenge. Not this season. Clearly this season, they're way off. They're not going to be picking up any sort of championship in constructors or drivers, but I need to see signs that say next season, they are actually fighting alongside Red Bull and that, that work starts now. And I think, especially last season, only seeing George win a race and mm -hmm. Hamilton not, I need, I need a couple of wins as well. Just, just to get the confidence going again for the team and just to once again kind of show that they're, they're on, the, on the mend. If these upgrades don't work and I don't see serious improvements from Mercedes, I'm going to be pretty worried for the, for the future of Hamilton at Mercedes a little bit because there's been talk of like Ferrari and, and, and maybe it won't happen because he's got a lot of loyalty in Mercedes, he's got a lot of ties to Mercedes behind the scenes, not just in front of the camera. But we need that championship. We need to at least try and get that championship. Championship? We need to try and win some races. <laughs> Focus on where it's you're true, at. It's true, we do. We walk we're yeah, one step stop, at a time. Yeah, stop running before you're walking. You need to just crawl first. Um, just speaking about those upgrades, um, mm. they have apparently brought a positive impact. Lewis has said that he is happy um, with the new upgrades. He said he was enjoying driving the car throughout the weekend. Mm. But Toto Wolf did kind of counteract that and said that the <laughs> rear of the car is still really nasty. Mm. Um, and it's something that the team are going to keep focusing on to try and improve over the coming race weekend. So yep. it's going to be a real test, but on a permanent circuit this weekend. So let's see the difference yeah. in this car. Yeah, no, 100%. Then we can judge it. We can yeah. judge it next week. I think on the simulator, they were saying that it, it was showing good signs, but they're keeping it kind of coy. And I, and I don't... Just that in case it doesn't work out. With great confidence. I want them to be like, yeah, this is, this is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a very good weekend for the Alpines, uh, mm. especially Esteban Ocon. Uh, he finished P3. Um, he followed a penalty after qualifying for Charles Leclerc, uh, but he maintained the position to take his first podium since a win in Hungary two years ago. Yep. Uh, Gasly also showing good progress for the team. He finished in seventh. And they had a really rocky start to the season. And I think it was after Miami. Yep. Um, they were getting a lot of criticism. Mm. But, their own CEO, I think. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, their yeah. own CEO was was giving them a lot of criticism. Mm. But they, you know, this is what you want to see, and it's it's competitive. It's really competitive. So happy to see Ocon on podium. He deserved it. Yeah, he deserves it, and it's nice to see just someone fresh on podium there mm. because it, we've spoken about it before in many previews. The fight between the the top four teams is is relentless. That's eight drivers, so there's just no space, and it's like. We've had seasons before where we've seen the shocks and a couple of wins like Gasly winning. Yeah. And, and, and those are some of the best races because, you know, that's, that's unpredictable. That's something that nobody can, can see coming. And to see Ocon on there, 
it just gives a little bit of relief to the rest of the grid that, listen, you can you can achieve something this season. Even though Aston Martin have leapfrogged Alpine and they've gone and taken an, up more spots, you can still get a couple of little results here and there. Well, it's important for them in, in that midfield battle, yeah. isn't it? Because Huge. there was so much that went on in the summer with Zach Brown and Otmar and all mm. of that going on, you know, Piastri. Yeah. A lot of drama with that, that midfield. Um, and, you know, they've got a really good team going on there. Mm. I think the partnership of Ocon and Gazi works really well. It's an all-French outfit. Yep. Um, we have spoken about that before, how, you know, it's, it's really appealing to, obviously, the French market. But I really like what they've got going on there. And I yep. think that, you know, it's taken a little bit of time. They've had mm. their issues. Um, but, you know, it, I, I'm happy for no, him. Really. I'm really happy to see him get P3. Mm. Um, and let's see, maybe they can be best of the rest. Yeah, and it is huge for that midfield fight, like you said, because what a podium is probably worth three solid races yeah in, so you've just bought yourself a lot of time there a little bit of breathing space. yeah a little bit of breathing room so yeah it's good to see yeah uh, and the car did show some solid pace as mm. well um we'll see if that carries over to barcelona um ferrari hmm. we say this every week at the minute it's a very poor weekend <laughs> for ferrari i mean science crashed in free practice too leclerc was handed a penalty after qualifying for impeding lando yep. uh, he dropped from third to sixth on the grid yep. you know if you're in monaco you can't drop places no. because you can barely get them back no. uh signs looked under pressure all weekend had numerous mistakes throughout the race I will say in his defence, because I do love to defend signs, but it wasn't just him. There was a few mistakes from him, but at the same time, strategy did really cost them, because at one point, when he came into pit, mm. he was just behind Ocon. Mm. And I think he was that going this, crazy about that. He was going crazy. I don't know if this was with the front wing or not, but they were so slow on it, and it cost him so much time. Mm. And he came out, and he was just behind Ocon again, and uh, I think that was part of the problem. Yeah. Um, he did slide off in the wet, but lots of others did. He did touch Ocon as well in that opening stage. Mm. He went on to finish eighth, but we're seeing aggression from Sainz and a I lot. think from looking at the two cars I would argue that maybe Sainz has got a bit more in that car than Leclerc does. It's tough to judge because like Leclerc as well this season at times there's been I think there's been a, a car failure at one point there's been a couple strategy issues it, it I, I'm, I am easing up on Sainz but maybe that is because Ferrari as a team are just so disappointing overall in terms of how they're managing situations they're getting a lot wrong and this is we said this last season as well so for me, when I look at Ferrari, I just think to myself, I mean, that Joe's not with us today, you know, people are stressed out. There's, there's, <laughs> the jacket there is the getting worn. Uh, for Ferrari, if they're not careful, Alpine might, as the season progresses, they might, they well, might start to cause them problems. I don't even look at Alpine. I look at them as someone like Alonso and the Astons mm. replacing Ferrari. Could do. Easily, and this this is where yeah. stroll this is where stroll comes into it. You'd say if, they're it, far more competitive at yeah, the moment. It, Alonso's doing his job. Alonso's been consistent all season in terms of challenging those Ferraris and actually overtaking those Ferraris and putting Aston Martin points wise where 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 they'd want to be behind the Red Bulls. It's just if Stroll can make that jump that I was talking about earlier, that's what's going to cost the Ferraris in this in this battle. But I'm really I'm really disappointed with the Ferraris again because. They've got two good drivers. The pace is there with, with Leclerc, especially. He's a big risk taker, mm. as we've seen previously with the, some of the incidences. And, and like you said, science was very aggressive. But the strategy's not mirroring and it's costing them. So yeah. I, I don't know with Ferrari. I'm starting to think that Ferrari are going to have a long season. I, I, think I it's, don't I, know if they're going to actually bring this back. Well, I think this is a big one as well. Obviously, Carlos Sainz, he is, is a home Grand Prix for him, yeah, being Spanish. Yeah. Um, Ferrari are going to have upgrades to the rear suspension this weekend in Barcelona. They had to put it off uh, after... a um, Emilia Romano that, of course, that yeah. was cancelled yeah. um, so again it's going to be a real interesting weekend because we've, we've got all these upgrades that have come to these different cars mm -hmm. we've been on street circuits for such a long time now so to be on a permanent circuit mm. we can finally see these cars in action yeah I'm it, excited. It's the upgrades between Ferrari versus Mercedes, isn't it? Basically. Yeah. Basically, this is the weekend where we really see what's, what's going to happen because when I'm looking at the, the standings, Hamilton and Russell are both ahead of Leclerc and Science. so yeah. this is I did not expect this. Big weekend. I did not expect that at all. To no, see that. I don't think anyone else would have either. <laughs> um, right, moving on, McLaren. Mm. It was a good weekend for McLaren. Um, Norris qualified ninth. He hit the barriers in Q2. Team worked very quickly in Q3 to repair the damage. It was so quick, actually. I couldn't believe they actually managed to get that done in time. Yeah. Uh, and getting back out on the trap to set a lap, and he finished ninth in the race. Mm. Piastri also had a good race, moved up to P10, took the final point. It's really good. Um, and he qualified after, outside of the top 10 as well, so that was really good work from him. Mm. Um, special livery for the Monaco week. Weekend, uh, fusing their liveries together from their first win at Monaco in 1984, uh, their Indy 500 win in 1974 and their Le Mans win in 1995. They're also going to use the same livery in Spain. Um, 
From where they were at the beginning of the season, it looked like the car was absolutely yeah, hopeless. Yeah. It really did. Um, but they seem to just be building bit by bit. and A bit been, of momentum. Yeah, a little bit of momentum. And Piastri seems to be the best of the rest yeah, in terms of the rookies. Really good stability from them to, to get in the top 10. And they followed it up with the race in, I think, Miami, where there was, was there loads of crashes in that race? Was it the race? Miami, before? yeah. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. So that's really good stability. Was it Miami? Yeah, was I think, it? was it Miami or was it Melbourne? I think it might have been Melbourne. Melbourne was when we had Carnage. Yeah, that was the race where they, where they got a double. Absolutely but really carnage. good stability from them. And it's good to see because they're a massive team. I think with Piastri, definitely best of the rookies. I mean, De Vries is really struggling. We've spoken about that with Richard in the last preview. And then obviously Sargent. Yeah. What can really Sargent maybe do in that? Williams, it's, it's, it's difficult for him. It's not it's not the greatest car as well. So I think with, with McLaren, really happy for them. Solid in the top 10. And... Whether they can go higher than this, I don't know. It's, it's a difficult one because the, com the competition only gets more fierce. Mm. I think when you're dealing with Alfa Romeos and you're dealing with Williams and you're dealing with you know, Alfa Tari, there is, there is scope for well, improvement. The there McLaren's is scope for overtaking. Well, the thought that they would be you know, the top end mm. of that mid-table, but now you see the Alpine, you yeah. see Aston, you see... And it's like everybody ahead of them is coming with upgrades. Exactly. So, so can so they really go any higher? I don't know. I think... I think this might be kind of where they cap off, but it's not the worst place to cap off. Because like you said, where we saw them at the start of the season was atrocious. Like yeah. they were one, of the, they were probably the worst team um, in terms of expectations mm. and what they were actually doing. So I'm happy to see some stability from them. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with them over the course of the season. They have also announced the signing of former Red Bull chief engineer, um, Rob Marshall, mm. um, who they hope will further consolidate our ability to establish the highest technical standards at McLaren. Mm -hmm. uh, he will start on January the 1st. Okay. So, we'll see. <laughs> still a long way away. Yeah. But long way away. Long way away. This is something for next season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Alpha Tauri, Yuki Tsunoda. Um, show great pace once again throughout the weekend, mm. finishing sessions in the top 10 regularly, held on to ninth throughout the race, which was good. Another point in the bag. Mm. Uh, he did have a spin in wet conditions. Um, it took him out of the points to 15th. Yeah. Uh, Sonoda's had a, had a good season for me, so I, I will kind of just. He's matured. That, he's matured, exactly. And I think that race is, I put it down as just maybe being a little bit unlucky. It was, it was everyone a, was spinning. Yeah, together. everyone was spinning. There was people crashing into barriers. There was people yeah. clipping each other. It was a bit of a messy race um, with those conditions. So I think he'll just move from that quickly. He's made himself very clear as the, the, the head driver in that team, rightly so. He's been a bit unlucky this season as well. I think he could have a lot more points than he does. Um, so, yeah, I think with Sonoda... Really good start to the season from him. Shouldn't really drop off any confidence after what just happened. Just bounce back. Hopefully try and get himself into the points. For Sonoda, it's all about just trying to just scrape points here and there. If there is a big dramatic race where a lot of people crash out, then go where the wind takes you. But, <laughs> you know, a, a normal race, just try and get one point, one point, one just, point. Just keep it competitive yeah. in that sense for them in that, mid, in that, in that back end of the yeah. midfield. Yeah. Um, he did say after the race that he had a lingering break problem throughout mm. the weekend um, and it got worse as the wet conditions continued. So he yeah. took B12 at yeah. uh, the chequered flag. Mm. So again, not a great weekend, but... Not great, but that can happen at AlphaTauri. <laughs> yeah, it, it can happen. It's not yeah. something that we're, we're, not we're like shocked about. No, definitely uh, not. Williams, uh, both mm. Albon and Sargent, they both... Oh my God, I can't talk. <laughs> Let's start that again. <laughs> Williams, both yeah. Albon and Sargent, they showed solid place out the weekend in Monaco, but neither would score any points into the race in 14th and 18th. Mm. Um, at one point, they were, they were actually doing quite well, mm. um, and I don't really know what happened there. Um, Sargent suffered a spin at the hairpin in the wet. He was lucky to not have hit the barriers. Williams, they have announced a competition over the weekend for fans to vote on one of four special golf-inspired liveries on mm. which the winning vote will be used as livery in the upcoming Singapore, Japanese and Qatar Grand Prix later in the season. Mm. So that's basically just vibes. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> just vibes. Let's just see if they're pure vibes. But, but with the Barcelona track, and when we were speaking about it last week as well, Richard was saying that a lot of these drivers, Barcelona's a track that they've almost done so many times that they're bored of it. Like yeah. They've exhausted European, in terms of the European circus, this is the one that, that they've done so many times. So... For the rookies, I'm expecting a little bit of experience. But how here. well can they do? Well, that's true. How well can they do? I think all they P10, can... P10, P9. Nah, all, all they all they can do is be competitive. But yeah. I'm expecting I'm expecting the grid to be a little bit more com competitive and a little bit more congested and and not so. I don't expect to see anybody lingering at the back of a circuit like this because everybody's raced here quite a few times, mm. whether it be through the divisions, F2, etc. So I think for me, Sergeant, yeah, just. Just try and be competitive. What what can you really do in a Williams like? I think they've actually looked a little bit more competitive. They, at the they have, but they it's, have. but they can't they can't go any further than than being just competitive. Like they can't. No, but 
<laughs> it's sad <laughs> because they're a huge team. They're a huge team. They're historic. I remember team. when they used to be competing for podiums. But Bottas, the, Massa. But that's the Those thing. Days they, are they, gone. Need, they need the type of investment that yeah. brings with a Red Bull or a yeah. Mercedes or a Ferrari. I mean, Ferrari still can't get it right. And even yeah. Mercedes yeah. with all yeah. that money. But mm. it needs something to bring Williams back to where they are. But I don't mm. know what can, what can do that. Because if they're bought by a conglomerate like an Audi or something like mm. that, then... Yeah. You know, then they're not Williams anymore. Yeah, no, it's true, yeah. And, and of course, we, uh, Audi are buying Alfa Romeo. Yeah, one of the most historic teams on the grid. And just, like I said, they, they're just nowhere near where I, where I always remembered them it's to be. It's sad. It is sad, I think. But hopefully one day they'll get back up there. <laughs> one day. It's a long way to go. Long way to go. Maybe in our lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Haas. It was a very difficult race for Haas. Mm. Uh, it's 150th Grand Prix Monaco. Um, both cars failing to get out of Q1, scoring points. Magnussen, he retired from the race in the late stages. Um, he has called on his team, though, to help improve the team, mm. saying they must target a turn of form similar to Aston Martin this year should they want to achieve any future success. Yeah. Um, Big uh, ask. Big ask, I must say, what Aston Martin have done is not normal um, for a lot of teams. I think, listen, it's fair to demand that. I guess it's fair to ask for that because you do want to see ambition from the team. But I think you kind of have to remember where Haas has come from as well. Like Haas yeah. have come from back of the grid, struggling, shocking but results. Also, they don't have the same money that, Alf, that, Ex- that Aston exactly. have. Not even close. You yeah, know, exactly. They... They, we remember the phone calls. We from, remember the phone from, calls. From, from hygiene, <laughs> hygiene. You know, I've crashed again. Yeah. Hygiene. Yeah. And then not only that, it's it's like, do you remember with the who was the driver, the Russian driver? Mazepin. Mazepin. Yeah. You know, they only had Mazepin because yeah. they needed the sponsor. Yeah. They needed the dad. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and then obviously everything else. And then happened. Schumacher as well for maybe. Schumacher. Yeah. Exactly uh, for for the brand. And so it, it's a bit harsh for Magnus. I think it's I think it's a bit harsh. I think it's a little bit maybe out of touch. Um, but I, I get it. Every single racer wants to be ambitious. They want to see improvements. I wouldn't say his driving was the best this weekend. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that that maybe mm-hmm. you know, maybe fix that first before before you talk. But. Glass houses <laughs> don't throw stones. But but I think has has have come a long way, and they've got a good driver lineup. I think it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot longer than what we've seen from Aston Martin for them to get up to that position. One thing's for sure, they're not going to finish bottom. No, Williams exactly. Will and that, that is good to see for Haas. Yes, nice exactly. <laughs> um, funnily enough, we've got some interesting things here, which does involve Haas um, mm. as we head into Alfa Romeo. Um, it was a quiet weekend. I feel like we never talk about Alfa Romeo ever. We don't. We don't. Uh, Bottas it's actually and, quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we literally never talk about them. They are completely irrelevant. And I'm sorry if you are an Alfa Romeo fan, but we just never talk about them. And it's a shame because you've got two good drivers. I mean, Valtteri Bottas is one of one of my favourite drivers. Yeah. And we just never talk about them. I don't know them. why. They just never They're just irrelevant. Like they never do anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, at least like with Alpha Tower, you've got Yuki who you, you don't do. know if he's gonna just like be going off on one on yeah, you know yeah, on the radio yeah. or just spinning it's it. It's too the calm wall. over at Alpha Romeo. It's just very calm, yeah. yeah. They, they both failed to score points. Mm. Bottas finished outside the points in P eleven. Mm. Um but this is quite interesting. There we go. I'll give you some flowers. It's interesting. <laughs> uh, recent rumours have suggested that upon Alfa Romeo's title sponsorship ending with Salba at the end of the year, mm. the company who runs the team and the original name of the team, they are set to join Haas from 2024 as a potential title sponsor at the rumoured sum of £20 million per year. Okay. I mean, I'm not familiar with the finances and if that's a great deal, but... I would assume in F1 it's not. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure about. But, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I pray for you. That is that is a, a good of negotiation that you've done because yeah. you need it. You definitely could. You could, you could definitely need the money. So are we merging Alfa Romeo and Haas? Sounds like it. I mean, if that's the case, for me, it's going to take maybe something like that to make those make those. But leaps. my question is, they're meant to be taken over by. They're becoming Audi mm. in 2026. Mm. So is this just a part-time thing that they just they can't be bothered to have Alfa Romeo <laughs> and Haas anymore? They're just going to become one or the other. Well, we say that Alfa Romeo is pretty irrelevant a lot, so maybe, <laughs> maybe they're, they're picking up on that. Maybe they're saying, like, right. let, we'll just like bunk in with Haas yeah. until Audi come in 26, yeah. and then we just go back and be like, hey, we're back now. We're back. Yeah. Maybe maybe that will that will get the job it done. It's weird F one like how they just do that. The, the amount of name changes there've been in F one is so difficult racing to kind of point. like follow. Yeah, racing point. We had Force India. Force India. We had um, Renault. Renault, Renault as well. So many different name changes constantly. So a lot. Salva. It's just yeah. It's what was Alpha Tauri before Toro Rosso? Toro Rosso. That that one was. I don't know why, but I can remember that one clearly. No problem. But I think that's because they're Red Bull's feeder team. 
Well, and yeah, so yeah. it's Alpha Tauri. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. they're Red Bulls feeder team, so I was always able to kind of make that connection. Yeah. But some like, of that's like ones, baby Red Bull. Yeah, baby yeah, Red Bull. Baby that's Red. why I just call them. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> uh, right, that is a recap uh, mm. and a preview for the Spanish Grand Prix. But what I want to know from you mm. is who is going to be your P1, P2, P3? Who's going to have a good qualifying and who's going to be the disappointment of the weekend? Well, Ferrari's not making top three again for me. I'm just going to just leave them out of this. I'm going to go, even though it's Science's home Grand Prix, I'm going to go for Stappen. Alonso again, and I'm going to go George, third. And I know I'd usually go with Hamilton. I was going to say, I'm just going to, I'm going to go George just to keep things interesting because the first two are a little bit predictable. From okay. Me. Um, disappointment? Disappointment. Disappointment. Disappointment will go to Perez. Again? Yeah. I don't know what it is with Perez, but he's disappointing me right now. <laughs> so I'm going to give him the disappointment. Oh. I, I, I really just want... When Perez did not win the race from pole, that, that really That just, was poor. That, that was, was really poor. Cool. And that was the moment I was just like, he hasn't, he hasn't got it. He hasn't got it. He's not going to do this with the second <laughs> season. He's just going to just fall into, into position or be in the second driver at Red Bull and take in... Well, if, look, if he doesn't do anything this weekend, it's most definitely done. Oh, it's, yeah, most definitely, sure. yeah. Um, right, I'm going to go with P1 Max, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go P2 Alonso, P3 Signs. I feel like he's going to have a resurgence. He was really pissed off last week. <laughs> it's just, it's just depending on upgrades, isn't it? It's Ferrari yeah. versus Mercedes for these upgrades. Aston Martin, of course, as well. So we just it's, it's tough to see who's actually going to make that, make that jump. It could be anyone. Disappointment of the weekend, I will go with... Leclerc. Wow. He can't afford it. DNF. <laughs> <laughs> Just another DNF. He can't, do you Mechan know what? If that happens, Joe is going to lose it. Yeah, literally. But science kind of maybe makes up for it a little yeah. bit. But yeah, that's, Let's see. that's bad. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, but obviously put your prediction, guys, into the comment section and let us know what you think is going to happen this weekend ahead of the Barcelona Grand Prix. Mm. Um, we also have this lovely... Oh, it's a bit heavy. PS5. <laughs> PS5. So the way you can enter and the way you can win is you have to like, subscribe on YouTube and on Instagram. So make mm. sure you go onto the On Track GP page on YouTube and on Instagram. Mm. Like the post, subscribe, follow as well. Most importantly, make sure you follow and then you will be in with a chance of winning this PS5. There you go. Uh, but that is everything for this week. That's everything. I'm Catch looking forward to it. Catch up with you over the weekend. Yeah, I'll be on this watch along. Um, wasn't on the last one, but we'll be on this one. So looking forward to it. And hopefully it's a great race because I think we need we need another dramatic race. I'm not saying any crashes, but some safety cars, some little clips. We haven't had any safety cars for ages. Yeah, it feels, it feels like ages. I thought we were going to have a race. I really I really assumed in I Monaco. I thought we were going to have a race. Yeah, but we didn't. We so none. I need that. And then hopefully a little bit of a little bit of a mixed pack. We well, yeah, I mean I'm excited to race not on a street track. Mm. I really am. Yeah, yeah. Good yeah. old fashioned racing. Good old fashioned racing. Some like overtakes it. hopefully. That's yes. Mm. Yeah, let's get that DRS involved. <laughs> I haven't seen DRS for ages. Well, you guys, I think you guys don't need DRS. I think you'll be I fine. just like <laughs> it when they put the DRS on. Literally, look, maybe that's the upgrade. I mean, the car does practically fly, so maybe it will actually. Do you know what? Fly. Yeah, this will be the upgrade for Red Bull. Is the car actually flies? It now. actually flies. It doesn't, and it, takes doesn't, off. it doesn't race on the ground anymore. Basically. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to see. It'll be like something out of Sonic. And it just goes, <laughs> uh, but that is all for this week. So we will catch up with you over the weekend for all of our previews, reviews, and of course, the main race on Sunday. Have a good week.